So it's very difficult even to know where they are. When you we got the wind of getting to the airport, so first the first thing you have to make sure you are in the airport, then you start looking for the others. But Isaac is among the lucky few to return to Kenya safely. The organization he works for, which he did not wish to mention, organized a charter flight for its employees. And what I found through the death and destruction and the tragedy was this incredible beauty of the community, the way people came together, the way they share food, share water. Concern now shifts to those without the necessary facilitation. Already, most of whom we spoke to insisted that the Kenyan government was doing little to help in the evacuation exercise. On Tuesday, the Kenyan government had denied reports that up to 16 Kenyan truck drivers may have been killed during the unrest. Saidi Jilo, a transporter based in Mombasa, says that the Kenyan government could be lying. Jilo has lost contact with three of his drivers based in Juba. His concerns shared by 40-year-old Reverend John Chol Dow. The South Sudanese man has called Kenya his home for close to two decades and shares heart-wrenching messages that his 16-year-old son Jacob sent him a few days ago. Loud blast and numerous gunshots, they keep coming closer. His son, a student at Lukenya Academy in Athi River, went back to South Sudan to see his native homeland when the violence broke out. My son, uh, they left the house uh, uh, on the second day of the uh, incident because the shelling were coming to their house. Uh, uh, so they had to run away and take refuge in, in the cathedral. Emmanuel Kachol, a South Sudanese businessman in Mombasa, now says that the unrest is not only causing psychological torment, but also financial strain. With the revenue collections, any, any hour that is lost is, is, a big, is a big loss to the government as far as the, the business, uh, I mean the, the custom uh, revenue collection is concerned. The days that we spend... Of course, it's a very big loss, both to the governments and the, and the business community. The United Nations Refugee Agency reports that about 36,000 people may have been displaced as a result of the fighting that has flared in the South Sudanese capital. Unconfirmed reports indicate that close to 270 individuals could have lost their lives from a violence that threatens to break an August 2015 ceasefire agreement signed between President Salva Kiir and his deputy Riek Mashar. Timothy Otieno, KTN News.